The suburbs. Almost as much written about as Madison Avenue. And just as much in need of reflection. Like Madison Avenue, life in the suburbs has its good moments and others not so good. Discouraged? Disgruntled? Heck no. They're glad to be here. Remember? They join the stream of family life in the suburbs, soon to become part of its familiar sights, soon to absorb its familiar sounds. But wherever they go, there's usually a baby nearby. And about the time the parents think their children have them hypnotized, they give a party and bring the kids. magazine written for young adults and matching their busy lives is bound to be lively, full of things to talk about, varied and warm. for the first time and determined not to miss a single new homemaking idea. They're busy just making choices and welcome solid information in concise form. It takes a while for a young couple to realize all they're in for when they buy a house or when they have a baby. And when they buy a house and have a baby, so hard.
hardly realizing it, they come into their purchasing stage and are off on a wild, non-stop ride. It's a happy-go-spending world, reflected in the windows of the suburban shopping centers where they go to buy. Red Book has been studying shopping centers because the people who created the suburbs are young adults. And the shopping centers are built in their image. Selling to young adults demands a new kind of marketing. For these young adults, the shopping centers have built fountains, commissioned statues, put in restaurants and freestanding stairways. They've included banks, loan offices, rental plans, plant nurseries, and places to buy building materials. The shopping centers see these young adults as people whose homes are always in need of expansion. People who buy in large quantities and truck it away in their cars. It's a big market. To help people find their cars, the centers have enlisted the children. They've put in shopmobiles to help them cover the ground. They've added banks of storage lockers, miles of checkout counters, and endless rows of carts. Carts rolling down the malls at Southdale, at Northland, at Gulfgate, Sunrise, and East Point, at Hillsdale in California. These young adults shopping with the same determination that led them to the suburbs in the first place are the goingest part of a nation on wheels. Living by the automobile, the first young adults in the age of the push button. Like the rest of life in suburbia, shopping has a family flavor. Do you remember what size she was? Five. Then we bought a tree to go with. Yes, yeah, sir. That looks pretty nice. I don't know. Shall I take it? These busy families make the shopping centers look young and colorful. They have a let's go see quality that brings crowds to community events and promotions. Since these young adults seem to be able to outlast their children, they stash them away at a neighbor's house and go back to the center for more. This is the life young adults lead, summed up recently in a single phrase, and dramatized by Red Book in major shopping centers all over the country. For more than two years, Red Book had been working with merchants associations in shopping centers, studying young adults. When the Easy Living promotion was presented, Almost every store joined in. The first center-wide promotion in the history of marketing.
Before Red Book could develop a successful selling program for young adults, it had to get out and see them many different ways. It had to get to know them so well that it could become a magazine solely for them. What are young adults like from an editor's point of view? Well, they're not so much high brows or low brows as wrinkled brows. They're serious. Writing for young adults, Red Book's editors have to keep learning and analyzing. Without too much crystal ball gazing, Red Book's editors have to keep an eye to the future. There is a whole new generation coming, soon to be young adults. A bigger than ever market of people who have a history of their own, who remember all the way back to Eisenhower, who probably never saw their mother use a ringer, think automobiles or household appliances, and have reserved seats on the next rocket to leave the Earth. Right now, you can ride along with the Happy Ghost Spending, Buy It Now, Young Adults of Today. Ride with the young adults who are buying 70% of all homes sold. Swing into the orbit of more than two and a half million families. Right now, with the only mass magazine aimed exclusively at young adults. You're watching Sleepcore, Pleasant Dreams.
The family is the basic unit of our society, the group that works together, plays together, suffers and triumphs together. In good times and bad, we can always count on family unity. But there is a problem facing this family. It is an unprecedented problem, never faced by American families before. It is a problem which calls for application of family unity, discipline, preparation, and possibly sacrifice. It is the threat of nuclear warfare. The awesome proportions of modern warfare stagger the imagination. Weapons with millions of tons of explosive power can be delivered on our homes by supersonic planes and soon by intercontinental missiles. Faced with this massive threat, our nation is reacting as it has always reacted to danger by diligently preparing new defenses. One of the principal means of protecting us is by civil defense and defense mobilization. This is a major responsibility of your federal, state, and local governments, which have detailed plans to meet every phase of a national emergency. The threat to our security is so broad, however, that official preparations of our governments are not enough. The responsibility for survival must be shared by every citizen and every family. This is because civil defense planning from the federal level to the family depends for its success on similar planning at every other level. The problem is one of national survival, and the only answer is a strong network of civil defense preparations across the entire nation. An attack upon our nation may destroy many targets and cause much damage. But if all of us have cooperated in building this network of civil defense, we can be assured that our nation will survive. We hear much talk about secret weapons. Civil defense officials have a secret weapon of their own. It is capable of mobilizing over 40 million American families into an effective civil defense. Whether she is the breadwinner or the manager of a household or both, the American woman is the key to family action. The entire family looks to her for leadership in the home. We women are the last to underrate man power, but the country is only beginning to discover the potential it has in woman power. 51% of our nation's adults are women and one-third of our workforce. Women are far more active in civic and political affairs today than ever before. It is only natural, therefore, that civil defense officials turn to the same reservoir of strength to help them mobilize our home defenses. They know the women will respond as did their pioneer ancestors. While the threat confronting us today is more complex, our course of action is still the same. We must once again make our homes into fortresses against attack. The National Civil Defense and Defense Mobilization Plan contains a comprehensive section on individual action. Civil defense officials are counting on you as good homemakers to see that your home is prepared. Much of your preparation must be directed at withstanding the effects of radioactive fallout created by nuclear explosions. Fallout is tiny radioactive particles of dust which can make you seriously ill or even kill you. Fallout will be a grave threat in a nuclear war, but you and your family can protect yourselves effectively if you do a few simple things. The most important is to build an adequate fallout shelter. You should have on hand at all times enough food, water, and other essentials to maintain your family for two weeks without any outside assistance. Venturing out of your shelter in a high fallout concentration could be fatal. 
While your greatest need will be food and water, you will also need cooking and heating equipment, extra clothing and bedding, first aid and sanitary supplies. This is very important. A battery-powered transistor radio for dependable contact with the outside world. Your morale and your safety may depend upon authoritative information from government officials. All of these items stored in your shelter will enable your family to survive in comparative comfort a two-week period of isolation caused by enemy attack or even natural disaster. You should also have a plan for moving as many of these things as possible to your car. If you must evacuate the area, you will want to take food and water, clothing and first aid supplies with you. The ability of every family to care for itself for two weeks will be the key to our national survival in an attack. At the end of that time, local governments are expected to be operating on an emergency basis. Within four weeks, the federal government will be able to provide help from its vast stockpiles, but it is expecting you and your family to get through the first two weeks on your own. Another important thing you must do is learn the warning signals. Our nation has a warning system which guards every approach to this continent. It can alert us to attack in a matter of minutes. Your first warning probably will come by radio, television, or local warning device. You must be prepared to know what the warning signals mean and what you should do when you hear them. The alert signal is a steady blast of three to five minutes, like this. When you hear the alert signal, an attack is probable. You should take action as directed by your local government. Tune your radio to a Conelrad frequency and proceed according to your community's emergency action plan. Do not, under any circumstances, use the telephone. The second signal is the take cover signal, a three minute warbling tone or series of short blasts like this. These sounds mean attack imminent. Take cover immediately in the best available shelter. If you are in a building that has no prepared shelter, go to the basement or to an interior first floor room and lie face down on the floor. If you are outdoors or in a car, go to the nearest shelter. If you cannot reach a shelter, lie face down on the ground in a ditch if possible or open the windows of your car and crouch on the floor. Your reaction to these signals must be instantaneous. Delay could be fatal. So know them well. Alert, take action as directed, and the warbling tone. Or series of short blasts. which mean take cover. Seek the best available shelter immediately. 
The next thing you must understand is Conrad. It is the nation's emergency system of broadcasting, the means by which you most likely will receive information and instructions in a national emergency. Your Conrad stations are at 640 and 1240 on your standard AM radio dial. Newer radios have them clearly marked. Keep tuned to one or the other, 640 or 1240, in the event of attack. Messages will be intermittent, so do not change your dial. If there is sufficient warning, Conrad will broadcast pre-attack instructions on where to go and what to do. After an attack, it will broadcast evacuation instructions and other important information. It will give you information on fallout, where and when it is expected, and when it is safe to move around. It will broadcast survival news and messages from the president and other leaders. Because Conrad is designed to keep enemy planes from locating their targets by radio beams, it is not as strong as day-to-day -day broadcasting. You will not receive Conrad broadcasts as clearly as you do your daily programs. It is constantly being improved by skilled technicians, but at present reception varies from good in cities to very limited in rural areas. Conrad tests are held periodically so you can see whether your radios pick them up. If they will not, you and your family should follow instructions you have already received from your civil defense officials. It takes a short time for stations to switch from normal broadcasting to Conrad, so don't be alarmed if you think you should be hearing Conrad and you aren't. The stations are changing over and the broadcasts will start in a few moments. Above all, remember the Conrad frequency. 640 or 1240 on your standard AM radio dial for official information and instructions. Another thing you must know is your community's emergency action plan. Your officials either have one or are working on one. You should know what role you and your family play. Your community's plan may call for evacuation. This decision must be made by your local officials after carefully weighing all of the factors. If there is an evacuation plan, be thoroughly familiar with it so that your family will know what to do. Your family automobile is your most effective means of movement. Be sure it is equipped with the necessary survival items and in good working order at all times. Keep the fuel tank at least half full and the battery charged. The car radio will give you access to Conrad broadcasts, and with vents and windows closed, the car offers some protection against fallout while you are driving to a shelter area. This little wallet-sized card is a good reminder of the things which you must do and learn. In a few simple words, it tells how each of us can be prepared for a civil defense emergency. Carry it with you. There is no better time to start being prepared than now. Ask your civil defense officials for a supply of these cards and see that each member of your family carries one with him. It will be a guide and a reminder to do these things. Learn your warning signals. Attack alert and attack take cover. You must be able to recognize them and know what to do when you hear them. They call for immediate and instinctive action. Learn how to use Conrad, the emergency system of broadcasting by which you will receive official information and instructions. Remember the Conrad frequencies, 640 or 1240 on your standard AM radio dial. Keep tuned to one or the other. Know your community's emergency action plan and your role in it. Your civil defense officials 
will be glad to help you work out your plans in accordance with theirs. Build a shelter which will protect your family from radioactive fallout. Stock it with food and water and other supplies which will sustain your family for two weeks. By that time, you should receive outside help. Learn the other protective measures against fallout. You must know how to find the most protection if you can't get to a shelter. You must know how to decontaminate yourself if you have been exposed to fallout. Learn first aid and home emergency preparations, such as firefighting and home rescue techniques. The help of trained specialists will not be available in an emergency. We will have to be prepared to protect our own homes and our loved ones. These are all simple preparations. Many are just good housekeeping techniques applied under emergency conditions. With a little study and a little practice, every member of the family will use them instinctively in an emergency. As your family participates in many activities as a group, so it must participate as an efficient group in the vitally important activity of personal and national survival. Planning and preparations not only will make your home a fortress, it will add to your community's preparedness, to state and federal preparedness. It will help make our nation so formidable that no enemy will dare attack us. You're watching Sleep Corps, media for insomnia. Here are a couple of real space-minded travelers. And <laughs> no wonder. The view from their new 1959 Rocket Oldsmobile makes the enjoyment of outer space more fun than ever. Their Oldsmobile Scenic Coupe has a total glass area of 36 square feet and safety plate glass in every window. And these space scientists like the way their new rocket conquers inner space, too. There's lots more room for the whole crew than they've ever enjoyed before. A spot check of the pilot's area shows that the captain and his co-pilot have more all-round leg room, hip room, and comfort, too. And with a 64% increase in luggage space, you can see that these spacemen are riding in the roomiest rocket of all time. And that new spaciousness is yours in two totally different linear look body styles. The glamorous Scenic Coupe and the dashing sports sedan. Available in all three Oldsmobile series. Wide open spaciousness is just one of the many bright new ideas in the Rocket Olds for 59. Plan to rocket away in a 59 Olds at your Oldsmobile dealers soon. Cigarette presents the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Show, I Love Lucy. Good evening and welcome. In a moment, we'll look in on Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, but before we do, may I ask a very personal question? The question is simply this. Do you inhale? Well, I do, and chances are you do too. And because you inhale, you're better off, much better off, smoking Philip Morris. And for good reason. You see, Philip Morris is the one cigarette proved definitely less irritating, definitely milder than any other leading brand. That's why, when you inhale, you're better off smoking Philip Morris. Later in the show, you'll see how you can prove that fact to yourself. But right now, 
Why not light up a Philip Morris and enjoy America's finest cigarette as we watch Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz in I Love...